Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at questions 21 to 25 of the Junior Maths Challenge from 2017. If you're preparing for the Junior Maths Challenge, also take my free online course, uh, Get Ready for the Junior Maths Challenge. In that course, you can practice real questions from recent Junior Maths Challenge papers. Every question has a video hint as well as a full video solution, and there are no ads or distractions like there are here on YouTube. Uh, sign up in the link below, no payment details required or, not, or anything like that, totally free of charge, so have a look at that now. There is also an upgrade course called Go for Gold in Maths Challenges, and in that course you can learn about all of the techniques you need for the Maths Challenges and practice on loads of original practice problems that I've made up there as well. But you can have a go at the free course first, it's a big course and it's very substantial and it'll really help you prepare uh, for the Junior Maths Challenge. So I really hope that I'll see you over there. Right, so splitting things up into triangles is a top Maths Challenge uh, trick for sure when you've got reasonably nice shapes. And that's what I'm going to do here. We're told that the angles in the trapezium are 60 and 120. So you can see I can actually split this trapezium really nicely into three equilateral triangles for that reason, right? This angle here is 60 and this one is 120, which is two lots of 60. Um, so uh, if I think about it that way, and then I think about this bigger shape, I can also split uh, all of these into equilateral triangles. I mean, I'm only really interested in the ones uh, that are on the perimeter, but perhaps I'll, look, I'll fill them all in, why not? Um, you know, you could, if you are doing this quickly in the challenge, you can just think about the ones uh, that are on the perimeter, because that's all that matters here. So if I look at the perimeter of the big uh, trapezium now, right, each of these uh, individual um, uh, sides of a, of a uh, equilateral triangle, I could call X here, and just count how many of those I've got as I go around, right? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the perimeter uh, of the big trapezium here is 15x, whereas for the smaller one it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5x. So the perimeter of the small trapezium is a third of the perimeter of the large trapezium. Uh, we know that was 18, so I just have to do 18 divided by 3, uh, and that gives me 6 centimetres, uh, because uh, so 6 is a third of uh, 18, you know, 5x is a third of 15x, right? So anyway, I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you just count the small uh, sides of the small triangles that make up each of the perimeters here, we get that argument, and the answer is C, 6 centimetres. Right, so we have some unicycles, bicycles, and tricycles. Now, each of these will have one saddle each. So if I let the number of unicycles be U, bicycles B, and tricycles be T, then when I add those together, I must get seven, because there are seven saddles. Each one of these has a saddle. 13 wheels in total. Unicycle has one wheel, bicycle has two wheels, and a tricycle has three wheels. So if I do number of unicycles plus two times the number of bicycles plus three times the number of tricycles, that gives me the number of wheels, and that must be 13 and we also need the number of bicycles to be bigger than the number of tricycles. So I'm going to do this by just trial and error now, because uh, look, I, there's not going to be that many possibilities. Right? U plus 2B plus 3T is 13. Um, right, for T, uh, okay, T is going to be smaller than B, so I'm going to start with smallest values of T, but there are only four multiples of 3 uh, lower than 13 anyway, so I bet I'm going to find the answer pretty quickly by doing this. So let's just try T equals 1, and... Um, then b equals 2, so that would give me 2 plus 3, that give me 4 plus 3 is 7, and then u is 6, uh, but uh, that doesn't add together to give 7, 6 plus 2 plus 1 is not uh, 7, right? Um, so, okay, I, I need b to be bigger than t, but it could, perhaps it could have been 3, and that would be 3 plus uh, 6 is uh, 9, and then plus another 4 gives me 13. Oh, and look, I've actually, oh no, not quite, 4 plus 3 plus 1 is 7, um, so that doesn't work. Maybe I could have 4 here. Uh, 8 plus 3 is uh, 11, plus 2 gives me 13. So 2, 4, 1 works. Uh, and actually 2 plus 4 plus 1 is 7. So there we go. I've got the answer here. Um, there would be how many unicycles? So the answer is B, 2. Now you might say, well, hang on, aren't there any other possibilities? If I was giving a really good mathematical answer to this problem, yes, I'd have to go through and I'd want to check that I can't make this work in any other way either. Maybe I'd start trying two tricycles 
um, you know, and three tricycles, and just just keep going until I've exhausted all possibilities. But it's a math challenge question. There can only be one answer, so this must be it, and I can stop there. And like, actually, I was lucky. You might say I was lucky here. I got the answer so quickly, but I did follow some good instincts and do it in a very sensible order, right? Looking through multiples of three because that there are fewer multiples of three than anything else. Starting with small values of t because I know the numbers that, that the value of b has to be bigger than t, right? So my search was efficient and it was guided by the problem. Uh, and that's our aim if we're going to do these super efficiently and um, and get leave ourselves some time to have a go at the hardest problems. I mean, this is one of the hardest problems, but um, uh, but still, we're trying to do it in the best way possible. So which numbers get more than one mark here? Well, it's got to be something that's both a multiple of either a multiple of three and a multiple of five, or a multiple of five and a multiple of seven, or a multiple of three and a multiple of seven, or possibly a multiple of all of them. Right, so if something that's a multiple of 3 and a multiple of 5 is a multiple of 15, okay? So multiples of 15 get 2 marks. Multiples of 3 times 7, which is 21, get 2 marks. And multiples of 35, which is 5 times 7, get 2 marks as well. So we can just write these down quickly, I think, here. Um, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 105, 120, 135, and 150 all get 2 marks there. 21, 42, 63, uh, 84, 105, 126, and 147 uh, will all have two marks, and 35, 70, 105, and 140 will also all have two marks. And I've just got to be careful that I don't overcount these because uh, 3 times 5 times 7 is 105, and that's going to be in all three of these lists here, right? So I don't want to count it twice, I just, so three times, I just want to count it once. So I'm just going to count these up then, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, uh, and the answer is E, 19. So this is probably the hardest question in this paper to actually explain because you have to sort of visualize uh, what happens when you cut through a cube, right? So, you know, the idea here is that I take, I've got something sort of roughly uh, cubical here, and, you know, can I um, so this one doesn't have a base, but you know, can I cut through the cube uh, and uh, get this shape? And you can sort of see that you know, if I just cut a wedge off the corner here, you can imagine, you can imagine sort of getting a a, a triangle, a, you know, a triangle uh, when I take that plane cut through. So you have to just think about: are there other ways of cutting through that could give you each of these shapes? I, I guess I can get a narrower triangle by doing something similar. And actually, all of these are possible. And um, if you visualize them. Uh, they look something like this. So you can cut off that corner, that corner. If you cut the corner off and you know go right up to the top there, you can get the trapezium, um, and you can get this hexagon by making a cut like that. So kind of a hard question. You've got to do your best to visualize it. Um, you know, um, try practicing this before the real test by just sort of looking at a cube and thinking about different ways of slicing it through, um, and uh, and just do your best with that one. But you can see from all the pictures here that all four are possible, and so the answer is E. So a very hard question to finish with, as always here. So let's think what's happening here. I'm going to draw a little picture. We've got uh, Exeter uh, on the left here. So Sam starts there, and he travels at 25 uh, miles per hour. Um, perhaps she, I suppose. And uh, London, we've got Morgan. Uh, who's going to be traveling um, 35 miles an hour in the other direction. And there's 175 miles between them. Right, so the first simplification I'm going to make in this question, okay, we've got Sam leaving at 10 a.m. and we've got Morgan leaving at 1 p.m. at 1300. Right, so actually by 1 p.m., right, Exeter, so Sam will have gone three hours from Exeter. So in three hours, he'll have done three times 25 miles per hour, uh, which is 75 miles. Right, so actually, let's just say, rather than being an Exeter at 10 a.m., let's say Sam is, let's say Sam is somewhere else, and the distance is only now 100 miles between them. Right, so at 1 p.m., uh, Sam is going to be somewhere else, still traveling at 25 miles per hour, but the distance between them is only going to be 100 miles an hour. Right, now, there's a really key idea that comes up in these sorts of problems. This is almost a classic sort of maths problem that people find difficult and, and, and dislike. But
know that's the trick, it's, uh, it's kind of nice. So if two objects are traveling towards each other at, at certain speeds, um, and I want to know when they meet, right? All I have to do is think, well, okay, at this point where they meet, wherever it is, together they will have traveled 100 miles, right? Sam is covering 25 miles every hour, and Morgan is tra traveling 35 miles in every hour. So between them, they are traveling 25 plus 35, which is 60 miles every hour. And as soon as they've covered that whole 100 miles uh, between them, they will meet, right? So we actually just need to know how long would it take to travel 100 miles at 60 miles an hour, okay? So we can do uh, 100 uh, divided by uh, 60 here, right? So you know, speed equals distance over time, or um, I suppose uh, I'm using here time equals uh, distance over speed, a rearrangement of that. Um, 100 over 60 is 10 over 6, which is uh, 5 over 3, so that's 1 and 2 thirds hours. 1 and 2 thirds hours is 1 hour and 40 minutes. So at that point, they will be together, and 1 hour and 40 minutes after 1 p.m. is 2.40. So I really hope you found this video useful. Don't forget, if you're preparing for maths challenges at any level, I've made free courses for all of the maths challenges. You can find links uh, in the descriptions below. Uh, click there and sign up to those now. No payment details required, uh, nothing like that. So you can sign up totally free of charge. There are some upgraded courses as well with some extra content. If you really want to master the challenges, you can sign up for those as well. But there's loads over there uh, for free. So I really hope that I will see you over there soon.